Good morning, welcome to Tara at Home. I'm here with Colleen from Tara, and we're at this time of year where it's kind of a really nice little gift to our friends outside is to help them along a little bit with some feed. And I, I think that's, a, you know what, we've talked about this past in, the, in, in the past on the show, and um, you know what, it's, a, it's really nice options, not only, we have lots of reasons for this obviously, yes. but it brings lots of beautiful little birds into your yard, doesn't it? It does, and this is one of the most important times to feed the birds because they are craving mm -hmm. some extra food sources, because there's not as many natural food sources, and they need a lot of energy to survive our cold winters mm -hmm. and our winters sometimes can just keep going right they so do <laughs> this is, so we have a whole collection of where do we want to start uh, let's start on, on this side over okay. here um, one of the biggest things is to remember that they need they do need the energy so yes. one of the highest energy um, types of seed are your peanuts and your black oil sunflower seeds so okay. you can feed the black oil sunflower seeds in feeders with the it's got a slightly larger hole to it mm -hmm. and those ones you can also uh, use for shelled peanuts, which is what I have in there now. Okay. Now those peanuts are slightly different than the ones that you and I would eat. They're not salted, they're not roasted, they're raw. So if you um. ate them, they probably wouldn't taste as good, but the birds love them. Okay, that's so a good tip. For those, one, yeah, for those ones in particular, <laughs> <Don't snacky. laughs> those ones are for birds such as um, cardinals and blue jays and some of those like the bigger hardier birds. And I think that's the thing you know if you want to do you know we, obviously we have birds that are native to southern Ontario so mm -hmm. first of all you're not going to be bringing something in that's coming from South Africa. Exactly. But, or that's going to be really weird. Um, but but we, you need to do a little bit of you know educating so do mm -hmm. some reading and find out you know what seeds and what kind of again different types of food sources are going to bring in certain kind of birds. Exactly, so if there's a particular type of bird that you want to bring in, you can feed that particular type of seed. Mm -hmm. So um, if you like blue jays in particular, this is a treat amongst itself. This is a whole <laughs> peanut feeder and they will devour this. So basically it's like feeding your dog first thing in the morning. If you put this out first thing in the morning and you have blue jays, they'll eat the whole thing. And wow, be gone. you know these little ones can get a little pricey, eh? <laughs> they can. They're, they're now, gourmet. does this make them lazy or is no, it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't make them lazy. But, <laughs> and the nice wondering. thing about these is it adds a little bit of color too. True. So, I know. I was just going to say these are really colorful, some of them, mm -hmm. right? So, is this kind of the same thing? This is the same thing. You okay. can either feed um, the whole peanuts in this one or we also have suet balls. Okay. Suet is an extremely popular thing. Most people know suet and mm -hmm. they feed that in the winter time. Exactly. It's got a high fat content, high protein content, so it's going to give them lots of energy Stick and it'll stay with ribs. them. Exactly. <laughs> Fatten them up so they, it's like they can survive. It's like for breakfast. A little bit of fat in there. <laughs> exactly. That's, but again, okay, so what's this one for? And this is also for suet balls. Okay. Um, so that's a specific feeder for that type. Okay. And you can see that it's longer, it's got more spaces in it. So that way you can also attract more birds that way too. Mm -hmm. So this, this okay. will get the clinger type birds. So they'll cling right onto the wires of that. Mm -hmm. And then they'll just um, feed off at the suet. Wait, I, I was gonna wait until we kind of got closer to the end here, but I need to ask now because we're talking a lot about the peanuts here. But you have those squirrels that are very, very smarty little pants and yeah. they will do what they need to do to get at that. And you'll see them take dives and literally swinging from it. Mm -hmm. how, do you per how do you prevent this from happening? Don't fight it. <laughs> the best thing to do, if you really enjoy feeding the birds, give yeah. the birds their area, mm -hmm. feed the squirrels off to the side. Give them something, either wow. uh, cobbed corn or the peanuts. My goodness. And then they'll stay away from the more expensive bird seed. Because relatively speaking, the peanuts are a less expensive option. Okay. So, you know, why not? welcome them into the garden because they're critters too so yeah. they need and then they're not, the they're not going into your roof and trying to come down to your drywall and land on your bed while you're sleeping exactly. so it's best and honestly to just... they're fun to watch <laughs> <laughs> i knew these squirrels man they're just they're, they're tricky <laughs> there are squirrel baffles and other types of squirrel uh, feeders and um, mm -hmm. squirrel proof foods that you can also use to help deter them mm -hmm. but everything's a deterrent That's if a squirrel show. wants it bad enough <laughs> oh if a squirrel wants it bad enough he's gonna yeah. get it so oh okay well keeping that in mind then let's talk about some other choices <laughs> Another high energy food mm -hmm. that is actually squirrel resistant is the niger seed. This attaches okay. the finches in your yard. Most people think that the beautiful gold finches migrate for the winter and go yeah. south. They don't. It's because you don't really see them around that much. But they change color. Because can you imagine a yellow bird? Well, this on is the what snow? I'm thinking. So what are Easy they changing? Okay, I'm, I'm. This is you are challenging my <laughs> ignorance right now. What is so much? What they color go they kind of a muddy brown color and kind of streaky color. So they kind Smart. of look like a sparrow, like kind of just dull. Yeah, so okay. They mix in over the winter, so they don't go anywhere, but they still like to eat. That is amazing. So the Niger is like their chocolate, and you can also get uh, a mixed it. seed that has other thistle and other types of seed How in it too. Cool. And this is a perfect little. And this is for perfect. It. And again, great if you have squirrels, because squirrels don't really prefer the seed. Sure. Squirrels can't cling to this or get to it. It's no, metal. They can't. 
So well, it's you know, a, another yeah. option. At night, they'll use their tools and get that oh, open. Oh, possibly, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Get their little workers Oh, well, I love it. Oh, well, that's a great idea. I had no idea, so there you go. Good and then if you can't decide on what you want to feed, too, this yep. um, tall feeder beside you okay, here this is, is cool. awesome. We have to show this. This will feed suet balls. Yep. It will feed shelled peanuts or sunflowers, as well as a mixed seed all in one feeder. So literally, you have three sides that are giving you so especially the best of all worlds. Exactly. If you have a small area, small space backyard, Love it. this is a great way to attract a lot of different types of That's birds. That's amazing. What a great idea. That's really nice, too. Lots of nice colors. That exactly. It's it nice well. and bright and cheery. Yeah, and it is. That's great. Very cool. And then if you're a little bit more environmentally conscious, and again, going on the same stream as the small backyard, the, mm -hmm. the pure seed has no shells in it. Okay. So it's not going to have like all the shells dropping into oh. your garden and making a mess that way. Okay, so everything true. that's in that bag is edible. Hmm. So the birds will eat the entire Okay, that's actually, thing. that's a really nice idea. Mm -hmm. Again, and this is looking like it's like multi-bird as well. Exactly. So. Yep. It has a little bit of everything in there. <laughs> And then the last two that we have over there, the red and the green one, are mm -hmm. actually made of recycled plastic. Wow, and they actually look like wood. Exactly. How they have neat. the wood grain to them, and they're just kind of nice. And again, that little environmental kick, they'll last nice. forever. No maintenance required, and they're great colors. They are really nice. And easy easy to fill. Easy right? to fill, easy to maintain. You can sponge them off. Make mm -hmm. sure that you also maintain your bird feeders, especially the tube feeders. They tend to get really kind of grungy at the bottom so make sure they give them a good cleaning don't use any strong detergents but just keep them clean because then you're going to deter the birds right exactly so you want to keep them healthy too and that's uh, you know what i think this is such a, a really great thing I, I i bought a little uh, bird feeder last year from here for my son and and he will let me know when it's empty because mm -hmm. it goes sometimes they just you know it's just yeah. like ravaging like and right? sometimes the birds will let you know my finches at my house will mm -hmm. actually start chirping at me when i walk outside if the finch feeder's empty amazing it's pretty neat though. And mm -hmm. you know, again, so, uh, you know, obviously the benefits we talk about, you know, you're, you're helping to feed this time of year as we're making our way through the depths of winter, right? Yes. So we're really, it's like the birds, some of that, uh, you know, that winter interest that we leave in our gardens is good for the birds, right? Yes, but definitely. at this point they've kind of picked their way through. Yeah. So we're, we're providing some fuel and to get them through, to get them hopefully to spring sooner than later. And then you can enjoy but them too. Again, you enjoy them and it's, it's amazing to see you know, obviously we know in the spring, in the summer, and fall, we have those beautiful pl the plant life in our gardens. We'll mm -hmm. track them as well. But right now, we've got to do this kind of thing. So lots of options here. And uh, again, just do a little bit of your own research, right? Just to find For out sure. what kind of birds you want to attract. But I think you could literally buy one of everything. Yeah. <laughs> and you know the squirrels are going to be there. They will. Right? So just ask some questions too, of course. So you guys know all of your thing, but uh, just don't eat any of it yourself. No, not so much. You're saying not a good idea, right? No, it's not very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> well, good ideas. Thanks, Colleen. It's always great to, uh, again, to have a bird feeder in your yard, whatever it may be. Go for the gusto and have a big one or even just a tiny little one and get your kids involved because uh, it's a really good uh, life learning lesson. It shows nature and it shows with those little uh, finches that change color. Yes. Right? It's fun. It's fun. Thank you. All right. We're going to have more terror at home after this. <laughs> when I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. I'm here with George from Wellington's Tack, which is located in Waterdown. And this is actually an equestrian shop. Yes, it is. So everything you could possibly need if you 
are near a horse. <laughs> yes, you could say that. <laughs> right? Yes. So, but the interesting part is we're kind of tying in some fashion here because, as we know, it's kind of very trendy and fashionable right now to be uh, into the riding boots and some of the, some of the, I guess, the clothing um, that we're seeing riders wear right. is kind of mainstream into our, our fashion world Correct. right now. So Correct. we thought this is kind of a neat place to come. Correct. So people can come here even if you don't have a horse on your property. <laughs> Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. uh, Wellington's Tack and Riding Apparel, obviously, we're a full-service tack shop. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the horse owner and the rider, as you can see behind us. Yes. However, uh, we try to differentiate ourselves from other uh, tack shops in that we probably do carry a somewhat broader line of equine fashion, mm -hmm. as we're going to see in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, everything you're going to see is performance wear. However, you'll also see that there's a certain fashion bent to it. Mm -hmm. It would be suitable for the workplace. It would be suitable to go out to the movies, go out for dinner or just casual wear day to day. That's the thing, I think when a lot of people look at, you know, riding over the years, there's been a consistency more with, you know, sort of the tan colored pants and, and but now I didn't realize that we were really getting into some cool things. Like we're gonna see some yes. pretty <laughs> fashionable stuff here. Yes. And yeah. as you said, it's also practical. So it is yeah. something that can legitimately be worn while riding. True. Uh, you'll find that certainly at the competitive level of show jumping or dressage, what have you, mm -hmm. those conservative uh, lines still remain right. and we do carry those. Okay. However, uh, again, uh, just like runners like to have fun things or yes. cyclists like to have fun things, so do riders. It's a sport. And it is a sport mm -hmm. and uh, the ladies do like to look fashionable when yeah. they're on a horse. They like to look fashionable when they're doing their shopping or sure. going out for, for dinner or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's where some of the designers for some of the brand names such as Good Rider, Ariat, um, mm -hmm. Tailored Sportsman, etc., mm -hmm. have in fact uh, decided to go a little bit outside of what has traditionally been, as How you smart. say, the brown, the tan, right. and the black. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So why don't we look at our first model and we'll sure. give people an example, again, of outfits that are practical, but we can wear them mainstream as well. Okay. Well, this is, this is Danielle. Mm -hmm. She's actually showcasing Tailored Sportsman right now, uh, with the exception of the belt, which is Lilo from Spain. The tailored sportsman top is in fact um, a moisture wicking top. It's a performance top. Mm -hmm. It is actually for spring and summer. Uh, it, it is a very breathable. Again, it's a technical top, but as you can see, it's something that you could wear anywhere. Sure. The riding breeches are tailored sportsman. Uh, they're very fitted. They come in varying sizes, so they can fit a lot of different body types. And we know very much right now that the legging is in right now for women and of all shapes and you know sizes. Again, as you say, so that's a perfect kind of a, it's like a really nice looking legging. <laughs> that's correct. Mm -hmm. And the boots she has on is the Area Broussard, which is actually our top selling winter riding boot. Partly because it is a riding boot, but it doesn't really look like a riding boot. No, it's really nice. Yeah. Like the two-tone colors yeah. and uh, and just the way they fit her leg, like they look great. Yeah, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you could go, uh, as a rider, you could be riding your horse and afterwards you could be going to the mall, you could be going out uh, somewhere on a cold winter day. Your feet are dry, your feet are warm, and it still looks great. And that's the thing, like I, my, my cousin, my first cousin is, you know, uh, was a uh, dressage and she, you could tell when she'd been riding because right. of the outfit it was very right. typical, but with right. that you wouldn't necessarily. No, think not so. necessarily right? so. Right, and especially with this one because now we're getting into <laughs> some animal prints here, which well, is very cool. Yeah, th this is this <laughs> is our good rider line. They're based out of San Francisco, mm -hmm. uh, the Napa Valley in San Francisco. They have sort of uh, gone a little bit more fashion forward than uh, you find with most of the suppliers, as you can see. Victoria is wearing a, the couture uh, vest. Mm -hmm. It is uh, got a full fur lining. It's got the full hood. That's it awesome. has uh, the little buttons on the back. The breeches are the leopard print breech full seat and the Dewberry of Ireland boots, mm -hmm. uh, Gore-Tex lined boots, fully waterproof. We call that a country boot as opposed to a riding boot. Okay, so what's the difference there then? Well, the country boot, the riding boot has, is designed for riding in the sense that it has a shank in it which offers support for the rider right. up through the instep. Okay, the yep. Dewberry boot would not have that, ah. but of course a riding boot is not necessarily waterproof. These are waterproof. Uh, so you said we could stand in a stream in those. You could, <laughs> you could. Uh, they're very, they're very popular among in the dis riding discipline of uh, three-day eventing mm -hmm. because they do a cross-country segment where they're jumping their horses into water, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. They walk that cross-country course. They love wearing Dewberry boots because they can walk through water, through mud, through anything, yeah. 
and they're waterproof all the way up. And that's the thing, so when you're riding, you are getting into some very interesting environments where you'll be right. out there where it is raining. As you said, you need to have, you know, and, and plus you're also sweating because you're working because it exactly. is a sport. So you need to have those special materials. It's not just your everyday material. So again, you know, as you can see, that vest, that top, or those boots are something that you could wear anywhere. Yeah, I love those pants. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and have a certain equine look, something that's a little trendier, a little mm -hmm. edgier, mm -hmm. but keeping in mind it is all still performance wear. Yes. So it is well made, mm -hmm. uh, it is designed for somebody who is riding horses. Mm -hmm. So it is well made, it's a well made product right. at, at reasonably uh, reasonably competitive prices. And that's Certainly what's neat about it too, right. but I think what's great is that it's not so mainstream that if someone was to come into into your shop, you know, they would have something a little bit different, a little exactly. bit special, right? Because exactly. it isn't like in your average store. Okay, okay. Danielle's back again. Uh, this time she's wearing a, a pair of, um, if, starting at the bottom, she's wearing mm -hmm. the Ariat uh, Bromont Tall Riding Boot. This mm -hmm. is a winter, what we call a winter field boot. Those but look again, really cool. They look like they've gone back a couple hundred years. I kind of like that. They are pretty look. neat looking boot. These yeah. are also waterproof. They're lined. They're a winter boot. She has on a pair of carrots, winter breeches. Mm. Um, Those look very fitted. They are. They look nice. You'll find that all the breeches are. And again, you'll find that they'll fit most body types much the same way. Oh, like uh, then, of course, she's got the horse bit plaid vest from uh, Arista. Hmm. Uh, interestingly enough, a Canadian company. Great. Everything made in Canada. That's nice. And uh, I believe the top that she has on is a carrots top. Hmm. And um, also, again, a technical top, moisture wicking. Again, looks great, but also designed as performance wear. Right. So, again, it has that really nice, sort of very classic look to it. Yes. Um, items that can really kind of, pieces in your closet that right. can kind of take you that sort of, uh, right. you know, I, I, I always love like Ralph Lauren. So, it has that sort of, you know, Ralph Lauren, I'm out in the afternoon doing my thing. And <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I may hop on my horse and know, ride away too. But. Interestingly enough, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a certain percentage of our clientele are ladies who will come in mm -hmm. and they don't ride, they don't own horses, they have nothing to do with horses, but they <laughs> like the look. I love it. And they will buy a vest like that, or they will buy a top like that. Awesome. My wife actually has mm -hmm. that top and that vest, and she has no problem wearing it to work. It's well, different, it's unique. Very she good. She gets complimented on it, because it's not something you're gonna find yeah. at a department store or at a chain store that's run of the mill. Okay, we have like 20 seconds left here, right. so just a Very quick quickly, rundown. Uh, this is, um, this is uh, Asmar. Mm -hmm. This is the all-weather jacket. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, uh, it is designed for the riders. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tuscany breech, and the um, she has a pair of zip area paddock boots on. Awesome. With that Tuscany breech and a carrots top. Well, again, moisture wicking. Thank you again, George. We thank you for coming to your store. And again, everyone can come here to the Waterdown store. <laughs> you do Absolutely. not have to own a horse. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you Good very fashion. much. Good fashion. Good fashion. I love thank it. You. All right, more tear at home to come after this. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. And what are we making today? I see lots of uh, yummy greens. Yeah, well, you know what? I thought for this for this dish, we'd do something that is, again, seasonal. Mm -hmm. And if you do curing at your house, this is about the time you're going to have some of these ingredients. Ah, okay. And the main ingredient that we're mm -hmm. using is pork belly. Mm. So 
If you make your own sausage, if you do anything like that, you would know that you're using pork shoulder and then you add a little bit of the pork belly, which is where we get our bacon from, for uh, the extra fat that you need. So what we have here is we cure our own pancetta at the restaurant. So this is the beginning of our pancetta. So we've got a dry rub on there. There's a couple ingredients there I won't, I won't some reveal. Secret some secret ingredients. We were all, you had us all guessing. <laughs> um, and so it's been been sitting in this dry rub for about uh, four or five days now. So it's starting mm. to get that flavor in there. You're starting to get uh, absorbed into the meat. So we have that. To offset all that savoriness and all that fat that's yes. in there, we're going to mix it with some collard greens and some uh, red chard. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, leafy vegetable, really hearty vegetable. It will stand up against the, the, uh, the pork itself. Yes. Um, but very healthy and it'll cut down on the amount of... Uh, fat and everything and mm -hmm. the savoriness of the dish. You can say, oh, it. it's still a healthy dish. Look what I it's ate. It's somewhat healthy. <laughs> <laughs> somewhat healthy. Somewhat. I mean, we eat bacon all the time. And if you're going to cure your own, this is far That's healthier the than way the bacon in your body. Absolutely right. would be. Exactly. Yeah, way healthier. Okay. So what we have, we have our skillet. Now, the only thing is there's a lot of fat on there, but you still want to add a little bit of oil and you need a high smoking oil. Okay. So we're using grapeseed oil. Okay. And I want it nice and hot. This rub already has some salt on there, so we really don't need to season this at all, mm -hmm. okay? And we're gonna put that oil, I'm just gonna make sure it covers the whole bottom of the pan. We're gonna start searing that. This is gonna smell good in about 10 seconds. <laughs> now, what I try to do is put the fat side down first, Yep. okay? Because what happens is when you put the fat side down, you render some of that fat out as well. Okay? Sure. So you get a little bit extra, and then, of course, you wanna save onto that. Mm -hmm fry something later on down the road in that <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah, that'll be the best. Mm. So put that on. And then we have the greens. All I did is I took the stems off the greens and I'm just gonna cut it into some rough cuts. Okay. That's a good excuse for people to use some of these greens that they maybe not choose. Some people just walk by these in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Not sure what to do with them. And again, they have more, definitely more of a, a robust flavor to them than they do. You know, some of the other greens. You know, really there's eat. a lot of push right now for kale, and uh -huh. a lot of people are eating kale. Yes. Um, and it, it's very similar in properties to these. Sure. The only difference is kale is really, really rough on your system if you try to eat it raw. Yes. And there's actually a, um, a term called kale stomach. And, that, and if you eat a lot of it, you will find a couple hours later your stomach is really sore and it feels very firm. And that's the kale doing what the kale is supposed to do. Yes. This will do the same thing, except it's a little softer on your digestion. Yep. I, you know what? Actually, collard, as you say, collard greens is pretty much equivalent to in mm -hmm. terms of the, you know, the property values and vitamins and all that. That's right. As kale. So why not? Why not? Again, mix it up a little bit. Because, mix it up. Yeah. yeah. Some people are trying to eat kale every day and it, it's a little bit much. It's a little so, bit much. And you know, the other thing good. is too, I mean, kale was never really used as a vegetable to be eaten. It was used as garnish. Yes. Um, <laughs> and it, and it should be priced as a garnish. And yes. if you look at the price of kale now, it's really gone up. because they know people um, are supposed to eat it. But these kind of stayed the same because they've been around for a long mm -hmm. time. They've been used quite a bit and it's, is nothing really different about it. We yep. just, like you said, people shy away from it. Mm -hmm. So we got a nice, you can see how that's caramelized Ooh, on the bottom there. Now I will say that this will caramelize a little bit more and you're gonna get that nice crisp on that because there is sugar in my rub. Ah, so I, I did let one secret out. There's All a little right. bit of brown sugar in there. Okay, that well gives a little bit of sweetness. Though, right? mm -hmm. Okay. But you can see what it's doing here. You can see all the fat that's coming oh off of goodness. it, and you're getting a real nice sear on that caramelization. Killer. It's fantastic. <laughs> it really is. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to sear it. Then eventually it is going to go into the oven. Because it is so thick, I had it cut like that yeah. on purpose, like sure. it took it right off the belly. You need to cook it in the middle. So yep. we're going to put that in the oven. You couldn't sear it all the way. No way. It would be, so. be burnt on the outside, right? <laughs> it would. But at the same time, you do want, you know, don't cook it well done. You know, mm -hmm. medium, medium is fine. You do want a little bit of color left in there. That's the thing with, with, with pork is that you don't need to, no. some people, it, we're starting to kind of realize that more and more that you do not need to have it fully cooked well done. No. A lot of times certain cuts of pork, you can't even handle cooking it all the way That's through because right. it's so lean, right? Yeah. Like Obviously if you look at a tenderloin and you cook it sure. well done, it, you might as well shred it and exactly. use it for a taco or something because it's, it's going to be dry. It's going to be dry. It's yeah. going to be very dry. This, this won't be dry. That won't be dry. This won't be dry. <laughs> It's got its own Even if you less. cooked it well done, this wouldn't be dry. <laughs> but, you know, leave that flavor in there. There we go. And we're searing all the sides on so this. I'm going to throw that on a bun, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just slice that up and away you go. A little bit of uh, grainy mustard. And oh, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> cool. So, over in this pan, we have 
it heated as well. Again, just a touch of oil. Now I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the collard greens in first, and I'm gonna put the stems in. Because it'll take a little longer to cook, it'll right? A little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of water in there, so you just gotta be careful with that. Mm -hmm. We have garlic, which is gonna go into the greens, and we also have a lemon. And this mm. is also gonna add a little bit of acidity, which is gonna help cut help down the on fat. that. Yep, that's nice. That'll be good. All right. Yeah, this is searing up beautifully. Nice color on that. Oh, so good. I notice you tend to um, keep your carbs low as well. Like you tend to do a lot of really good vegetables with proteins, and sometimes they they're enough in itself that they don't really need to yeah. be having some big order of mashed potatoes or risotto nope. necessarily beside it or whatever it may be. Yeah. It can be just that can carry itself. It can. You know, not every dish needs to have a carb built into it. Right. Um, you, you know, there's enough fat in here, there's enough uh, mm -hmm. uh, of flavor between these two and enough in here that it will fill you enough up. Food general, enough food yeah, in general. Enough food in general. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that you don't really need that carb. Mm -hmm. So okay. leave it out. And for right. this dish, it, carb would be hard to fit in. I've, I've been thinking. <laughs> All right, so what we'll do is uh, you're going to finish that off. Throw that, put in, the that oven. in the oven, yep. right? And uh, we'll finish off these greens. We'll come back and put it all together. And, uh, and again, this will make for a very nice hearty dish at this time of year. Sounds How long good. are you putting that in the oven for? Uh, I would say that you're going to have to put that for about uh, eight to ten minutes. All right, sounds good. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. The Hamilton Spectator, at work, at home, or on the go. Read us online, in print, or download us to your e-reader. Get the Hamilton Spectator any way you want it. Good morning, welcome back to Tara at Home. We're back with Chef Mark, and uh, we've made our lovely, mm, look at that. We've done it. <laughs> it's just yeah. out of the oven, and uh, you again, you said about seven, eight minutes in there? Yeah, about seven, eight minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, in the greens, this mm -hmm. is what ends up happening. They've wilted right down. So that was all the greens that we had earlier. Yes. This is what you end up with, just so you have an idea. Because some people, you know, they put a little bit thinking on when it's not cooked, oh, that'll be plenty. And then mm -hmm. when you wilt it down, you don't have enough. It does wilt <laughs> down quite a bit. Everybody gets like a couple leaves. <laughs> exactly. So I added a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic to that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon. This adds some nice acidity and it'll go over really well with the pork. There we go. And then we're going to plate this. Okay. So as you're doing that, I'll just remind everybody at home, you can find all of our awesome recipes that uh, Chef Mark prepares for us on our website at terragreenhouses.com, including this one. And again, it's all about the kind of the hearty wintry meals right now as we're kind of stuck in this season. So we're stuck. We're stuck here <laughs> we're for a stuck. bit. Whether we like it or not, this is what's happening. So there we go. Now I have some creme fraiche that we made. Which you might want to have this recipe after you get back from your vacation <laughs> where you're wearing your bikini. <laughs> yeah, this this one's got a little bit of fat in it. Yeah. But that sounds like that would be really good on there though. Oh, like creme it's fraiche. fantastic. Look at that. And we're just going to slice that. Awesome. There we go. And also a reminder as well, our uh, Terra at Home Winter Market is still running at our Milton stores on Saturdays from 10 to 3. So something to check out after you finish watching the show today. Run by and get some ingredients and uh, hunker down and enjoy your, your winter weekend at home. Yeah, that looks awesome. Go. So, so good. Now how many is that going to fit? Feed? There you go. I would say, you know, if I cook the, cut the rest of that, you can get two portions out of that for mm. sure. Or my dad. <laughs> <laughs> <Or> you're done. <laughs> Thanks, Chef Mark. Always great being with Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have yourself a good weekend. <laughs>